Today on Commander Replay, we check out this Kenrith Tutorless Combo Deck. Are we lucky enough to find our combo off the top of our deck? Find out next on Commander Replay. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Also, be sure to use my TCG Affiliate Player link when buying new cards, as it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Welcome back everyone, playing some Kenrith the Returned King Tutorless Combo today. Today's deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter Jared, and they've been wanting me to play this deck for a little while, and uh, I just got super behind with all the GP Vegas decks, so trying to get caught up on the Patreon decks. And this is a Protean Hulk combo deck that searches for infinite mana with Pillapala and Grand Architect. Then you bring Kendrith into play and have opponents draw out their libraries. Um, so that's the plan here. There are no tutors in the deck, which I think is an odd place to be. So that's telling me that this deck is probably used in a place where full combo is way too strong for what's going on so by pulling the tutors out that does water down the power somewhat there is still really good card draw in the deck so it may not be that much of an issue um but it does add more of a luck element to the game where you may just not draw the things you need to win so uh you give your opponents a fighting chance so i think it's an interesting place to be and probably has something to do with the specific meta that they play in Anyway, we're going to go ahead and keep this hand. We've got three lands. Looks all right. One's a colorless. Not the best, but uh, we've got a Floodplain. We've got a Dockside Extortionist. We've got Faber Elder. So that's some pretty good mana ramp right there. we got some card draw to follow it up, so that all feels pretty good. There are a few stacks elements in this deck as well, so it tells me it's probably also being used in a pretty strong setting where it's probably needing to fight against some other combo decks. We see a Thalia right here. There's a few other things as well. So as I mentioned, we're playing Kenrith, the Return King, four and a white for a 5-5. Five five. Pay a red, all creatures gain haste and trample until end of turn. I like that ability a lot. Uh, one and a green, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Two and a white, target player gains five life. That ability is pretty good. You pump a little mana into that, and you can take yourself out of a danger zone or save yourself from an alpha strike. Three and a blue, draw a card, always good. And then four and a black, really interesting. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control, so you can reanimate your own stuff, but you can also reanimate things for your opponents and put it into play on their side if you want to, if you wanted to play a more political game. I don't know that that's going to come up in this particular build, but it's there if you want it. So anyway, we draw a Wood Elves. That's probably going to be pretty helpful. Let's go for the Floodplain right here. That one does come in tapped. I'm thinking maybe like a uh, Steam Vents or Volcanic Island. I didn't see if there's dual ends in this deck or not. Um, to get blue and red for the Dockside and the Ristic Study. Uh, and then on turn three, we can get the Wood Elves, and that should be able to get us into all of our colors. Or we may even go for Thalia on turn two. We need a white, though. I don't know where we're getting that white from, so have to think about that. Opponent's doing some stuff on the first couple turns here, so uh, turn one exploration for the Golos opponent seems really good in that deck. And a turn one Carpet of Flowers followed by a Findhorn Elves for the Kaidel and Thrasios deck. So I told opponents to bring some pretty strong decks to the table. I said eight to nine. Had them take a look at the deck list. It, it's kind of hard for me to rate a strong combo deck that doesn't have tutors. Like, how do you, how do you rate that exactly? I don't know. So... Anyway, it looks like they've brought some decks that are packing some punch. Uh, Kaidel and Thrasios, I assume that's just infinite mana and maybe some wheels and things like that. I assume that it's probably leading off of Thrasios more than anything, but without having seen the deck, uh, don't know exactly. With that, that'll bring it back to our turn. Opponent does play a far seek before they passed, so they get them they get themselves a little bit of mana ramp as well. We draw into a thought vessel, so all of the mana ramp. Gotta love that. Uh, crack the floodplain, see what we've got for lands. Yeah, I'm going to get the steam vents right here. We'll go untapped, snow covered, get the thought vessel, and we'll pass like that. I yeah, probably could have went for dockside that turn, I didn't think about it. I drew the thought vessel and kind of messed my plan up. I'm also not feeling the best today, so I may not be thinking as clearly as usual. There's an Oko. Oh, that reminds me. I did make two changes to this deck. There was an Oko in this deck. Oko's like 40 tickets on Magic Online or something like that. So it was feeling a little bit expensive. I replaced it with an Imprison in the Moon. I get that Oko does a little bit more than Imprison in the Moon, but, you know, essentially just slotting it out for another piece of removal that is not $40. And uh, opponent makes themselves a food token. Yep. Opponent's going to play a Dockside Extortionist. Yep. They get three treasures. Uh, continuing on our opponents, by the way, next up we have Champion of Thune piloting Golos, a deck we've seen from them a number of times. I don't know if this is the same build they played every time, or if they have multiple builds. 
Um, but yeah, it's Golos. It's a strong deck. Uh, they've got Exploration down, which is really powerful. Uh, combined with Sylvan Library, they can get the extra card draw. They're at 28 already, so they've been drawing pretty freely. And they it's turn three, and they have a lot of lands in play. They go for a Merciless Eviction, exiling Planeswalkers, want no part of that Oko. I'm down for that. Uh, they, luckily, they leave the artifacts and enchantments, which means Doxide Extortionist is still going to be a nice play for us. Two opponents have more or less emptied their hand in three turns, which is... Uh, Really good. Here comes Arcades into play. Our final opponent, by the way, is Liam Cax playing Arcades the Strategist. And they said that their deck is firmly not in the 8 or 9 category. It's probably around a 6. A little bit underpowered. They said they would play their best, do what they can. Who knows? Maybe the three of us will kill each other and they'll just come out on top uh, by not being the threat all game. I've seen it happen. So that'll bring it back to our turn. There's that Imprison in the Moon. That one seems pretty good. Let's play the Sanctum of Eternity. Let's get Dockside Extortionist. Gonna get a pretty good chunk of mana right here, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, that's six treasure tokens. That's a lot. Let's get the wood elves. Question is, how many treasure tokens do we really want to burn right here? I mean, we've got a lot of mana ramp, so I think we could probably go pretty hard with it. more uh, Harder than I typically would. We do need to get some white, I guess, for the Thalia. So let's get, let's get Temple Garden untapped. Let's get the Fae Burrow. Do we want the Elder? I mean, I want the Elder, but I also want Ristic Study and Thalia. We've got six total mana left. Uh, that would be exactly enough for Fabro and Ristic. Yeah, let's go Fabro Ristic. And we'll pass turn like that. Fabro Elder is a pretty sweet little card out of uh, Eldraine. And it says it gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control and tap it. For each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. It's an ever so slightly worse bloom tender it costs a little bit more mana but it does get vigilance and additional power and toughness so you know a little bit of a trade-off there uh when you're in a fast as possible setting obviously the mana matters but if you're not uh Faber elder is a nice card that is 50 dollars cheaper than bloom tender so that's pretty nice uh interestingly the thrasios opponent kept a one lander on the strength of carpet of flowers and has no additional lands at this moment in time so trying to go all in on the hand that they had so opponent's going to cast a Demonic Tutor, and we get a Ristic Study trigger. We draw a Breeding Pool. Ooh, that's a Peregrine Drake for opponent. That one seems pretty good. Interestingly, does not cast their commander. That seems really interesting. Counterspell, maybe? I don't know. But they've done a lot of damage to themselves, so they will die to a gentle breeze rolling through the battlefield. There's a Wall of Essence for the Arcades opponent. Yep. If Arcades decides to focus him down, then he might just be out of this game real quick. We get to draw with the Ristic Study. This is Fairy's Protection. Really like that one. Arcades will draw. Wall of Blossoms. Opponent will draw two cards. We draw a Reliquary Tower. Sweet. Arcades is going to swing our way. Blah. Can't do much about it. It's going to be three in the air. That's going to bring it back to our turn. There's a Scavenger Grounds. Let's go ahead and play the Reliquary Tower. We swing into the Golos. They seem that they have a ton of mana. Their life total is getting pretty low, so why not just try to uh, put a little more pressure on them? So we'll swing in with the Fabro Elder. It's a 4-4. Not terribly worried about combat tricks or things from Golos. Yeah, they're just going to throw the Dockside in front. That's fine. Dockside down. Bring it to our second main. Tap the Fabro Elder. Get ourselves a Kenrith. Yep, there's the Mana Drain. Okay, yep. Shoot, saw that coming. Opponent pays for the Ristic Study. Kenrith back to the command zone. I think that's okay, though. Uh... Got five mana left. I think it's time. I think we just play Thalia. Don't have the colors left for the Teferi's Protection. Probably could have planned that a little better. I guess maybe not. That one makes white. Yeah. Hope nothing bad happens. Oh, opponent said they didn't want to expose their general to Oko. Yeah, that seems fine. Sylvan Library trigger for opponent. Bet they're hoping on some lands. Carpet of Flowers. There's a land for opponent. Kaidel coming into play. That'll trigger the Ristic Study. That's an Elish Norn. That's a pretty good one. Uh, and may be very useful in allowing us to not die to the walls in the next turn or two when uh, when they start looking for a big alpha strike on someone. Sylvan Library trigger for the Golos opponent. Oh, that's a Deadeye Navigator. This seems bad. Opponent's got Peregrine Drake and Deadeye Navigator. Uh, I knew I should have imprisoned him in the moon. Knew it. Yep, here we go. There's Vampir Tutor. Opponent says they have a path to exile, but because of Thalia now, they're stuck and they can't cast it. Yeah, that's not great. 
Way to get rid of Thalia. Not currently. We could have if we had the fairy's protection mana open. Ah. Uh, I was casting Thalia to hope to and try to try to avoid something like this. So we're gonna scoop it up right here. Opponent says they just activate infinitely until they hit Aetherflux Reservoir and then kill us. Although now that I've left, opponent can path in response to stuff. So maybe I kind of wish I went for something instant speed instead of Imprison of the Moon. Imprison of the Moon's really good, but uh, like a generous gift right there. We can save it for when we need it against the uh, against the Peregrine Drake because like Imprison of the Moon is one shot. If we had Oko right there, I'd probably use Oko on it uh, to keep it away from opponent. But because I went for the one shot thing, it kind of bit us a little bit right there, but... Uh, I would say that we do look a bit weak to creature strategies, so I'm guessing this deck is played in a combo meta. Um, I'm not seeing a lot in the way of board wipes. There's an austere command. There's a cyclonic rift that's two. Not even a blasphemous act. It might be worth adding a blasphemous act in the deck. Also, maybe a little bit light. Uh, could probably have another counter spell. You could go for like a counter spell or a blasphemous act something. It seems like the deck just ramps like crazy. Like we had so much mana ramp, which it feels great. Uh, feels great to come out there with a ton of mana, but at some point, uh, you got to stop your opponent's decks from being able to interact as well. So, so yeah, I wonder if it's the case that this deck plays against a bunch of decks that are weaker than it, thus it's chose to go no tutors, um, which which also means that you don't need to interact quite as much if the decks that you're playing are weaker than the one you're playing, because uh, chances are the things that they're doing won't necessarily just outright win the game. So just some thoughts right there, but I probably need to play the deck again to really get a better feel for what's going on since, you know, we got comboed out in turn five, so can't really do much about it. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.